hello and welcome back and we are booting up the PS5 and this time with the Aurorus 7000S. That's right, we are testing out the Gigabyte PCIe M.2 NVMe SSD. We're testing out the 1TB version as you can see here on screen. The PS5 with the beta update has acknowledged that it's there. Now, before we go any further, just like my other tests, let's chuck the disclaimers out there straight away. First and foremost, I am not recording this video in my usual studio. Unfortunately, I have had to record this at home on the fly very, very quickly, and the result is that I'm not going to be able to control the sound quality anywhere near as good as I would have liked to doing this in the studio. It's a bit of annoying given that I've had the PS5 there most of the week, but there you go. Secondly, there is going to be occasional pixelation during this recording. The reason is that I am recording via an HD capture device on the PS5, and as it goes through into the recording laptop, sometimes with more and more motion on screen, there is going to be pixelation during OBS's recording of this. So I apologize for slight pixelation, but do not think that pixelation has got anything to do with the M2 SSD or the PS5 or the console storage or the game. It is OBS and as things become more frantic on screen within a game that can cause a little bit of tearing there but for now let's go ahead and format this SSD let's see what the benchmark that the PS5 is going to give this drive and we've got it rated at a lovely 6557 megabytes per second sequential read which is exactly well, I say exactly, it's just over a thousand megabytes per second more than the expected minimum of this system. So we can go ahead and go ahead and format this drive. So it's worth highlighting during the course of this that we're testing four games, just like in my other tests. First, we're going to see this picture of me looking like a bit of a tit there, cooking a barbecue. What can I say? We've all been young once. And as you can see there, we are running the beta software. Now, the four games, we're running the same four games we've always tested. Control, um, Destruction All-Stars, Destiny 2, and Man Eater. We will be testing more aggressive games when we do more direct comparisons between drives later down the line. But I'm testing these because it's a nice, quick and easy way to test as many games as possible while still keeping them all on the PS5 storage. As you can see on the bottom right of the screen, that's the console storage. If we go into Destiny 2... Look at the bottom right of the screen, console storage. If we go to uh, the uh, Destiny uh, Destruction All-Stars, con uh, console storage. And finally, control, scroll to the bottom, console storage. So they're all in there. And if we make our way into the settings menu and then into the storage area, we can see that console storage is there. And there is our gigabyte drive there, the AG70S1TB, the less catchy name for the Aorus or Aurorus 7000S. There's nothing on that, and we're going to change that very, very shortly. So the first thing we want to do is move all four of the games that we're testing today over to the M2 NVMe inside. Uh, this is so we can test them all and compare them against the same four games loading from the console storage recorded earlier. So what we do is we select the four games that are on the console. So once again, that's Control, Destruction All Stars, Destiny 2, and Man Eater. All of them PS5, as you can see there from the logos. And we're going to move them over to the M2 NVMe storage. Now, even though this is just 149 gig of data being moved, it's worth discussing why this takes so long. Now... I have looked at this in other videos, and I'm sorry to be repetitious. I'm, so, I'm sure a number of you are going to fast forward, and I don't blame you if you've seen my other videos. You've heard me say this already, but I am going to repeat it for everyone else now. Um, there's something about the way the PlayStation handles data from the internal storage to going external or moving it to a parallel M2 NVMe drive. There's definitely some kind of checks that are happening in between them, and definitely there's something where data is being done in a block-by-block -block fashion internally with its own unique formatting. The result is that it makes comparing benchmark speeds as you see here which is 149 gigabytes not really comparable to that of the reported read write performance that we see on traditional pc use now when these games are running with the uh, recommended minimum of 5500 megabytes per second sequential read that's because this data 
is going to be accessing smaller portions a great deal more quickly. So what you're looking at here is not indicative of the drive's activity when the system is in use. If this was a PC build and we were just drag and drop in drives or an external drive with say 10 gigabit ethernet, things would be very much different. But for now, we're not going to judge these drives on this part of the video where we're transferring. I'm merely showing it to indicate and kind of explain some of these transfers here where a lot of people may look at the moving of data like this when they're moving data on and off the console storage or even archiving to external drives so you understand that it's not a failing on the PlayStation or the drive. It's just the way things are checked and handed over internally perhaps for anti-piracy, um, perhaps for encryption happening in the background, who knows. But for now, as this draws to a close with all four games, we're going to get ready to test our four games one after the other, with the first one being Maneater. Now, as you can see, we're moving the games on to there. If we come out of that menu, we can, again, right-click them again, go down, M2, M M2 SSC storage on the bottom right. We'll go into Destruction All-Stars. On the bottom right of the screen, M2 SSD storage. We'll go into the next one. We're going down there, M2 SSD storage. And as we go all the way through, M2 SSD storage, all the way through to Maneater there at the end. Now, when we compare these games, a lot of these games, as mentioned in my other videos, there's not much point comparing their boot cycle from the main menu, the XMB, because a lot of these games, particularly these three, are going to have titles where they are unskippable. That means that they're going to be like development studios and stuff like that, that we're not going to factor into the load screen. So Maneater, Destiny and Destruction All-Stars, we boot from the main menu. Only Control, which we can boot from the XMB a lot more cleanly, we're going to do it that way. But for now, let's go into Maneater. And when we get to the title screen, I'm going to compare the booting of Maneater on the M2 NVMe storage against that of the console storage boot of that game recorded earlier. And we're going to see how this compares with the console storage versus that Gigabyte or Aurorus or Aurus. I've never learned how to pronounce that, actually. 7000S in real time going to see how that fits with them side by side. None of these are skippable, by the way. Super annoying. And as we get onto the title screen, we're going to go ahead and compare the boot cycle of these two games. So here we are on the title screen. I'm going to get the other uh, pre-recording up on screen there. I'm not going to talk much during it because I can't see them both side by side in the way that you can. But for now, I'm going to click my fingers and then I'm going to start this comparison. Big angry shark. Poor old dude. On the right there. And again, watch out for the pixelation. But as you can see, here we are in the game. And again, this time I'm going to maybe refrain from going too fast. Because I think in my previous recordings, I shoot forward and it just caused all manner of pixelation while I was doing it. So for now, let's maybe take it the tiniest bit slower. No, we're not. We're just going to kill whatever that turtle is there. I'm just going to continue through. But as we can see, the game has loaded pretty well. I'll be honest, near enough identical to the internal console storage there for that drive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to exit this game now and make my way into the next game. Right, so we're on the desktop of Destiny 2 there at the title screen. And we're not going to waste any more of your time. We're just going to go ahead and click X. On this game shortly, I'm going to click my fingers and get the two next next to each other on screen and compare the boot time. This one does have a few extra layers during the boot sequence. I have to select my file and I'll have to skip a couple of cutscenes, rapidly tapping circle, but I will be doing that uh, simultaneously both on the older recording on the console storage and this recording here. There might be a slight difference there. Uh, in terms of when I selected my save file or when I'm skipping these cutscenes by rapidly tapping circle. But it will be very minimal there on screen and it should be absolutely fine there for you guys to see. Again, ignore the pixelation when it comes up. That is just OBS. And I'm being repetitious, but I know there'll be people who haven't paid attention to that. And they will hammer down in the comments, oh, it's all pixely. So here we are on screen. We're loading up the game and I think that's absolutely fine. We've got some world there. We're all in the game and overall gotta say 
still absolutely fine. Uh, in my previous video, I did comment that this is what Croydon at 2 a.m. looks like, and I'm really, really sorry. I didn't mean it. It's really 3 a.m. in Croydon, to be perfectly honest. 2 a.m., they're still outside, and maybe a pinch later. That would even be safer, wouldn't it? But I think, again, for now, I think this is absolutely fine as an indication of what this game's about, and ultimately that it loaded from the M2, lovely and fine. Look at that lovely shadow effect there. Uh, shimmer, I should say. But let's come out of this game and go into our next game, which is going to be Destruction All-Stars. Right, so here we are on Destruction All-Stars. We're at the title screen there, and I think, again, we're not going to waste too much of your time. I've told you everything so far. I'm sure some of this stuff on screen is getting pixelated as I speak, but never mind. I'm going to go ahead and kick this off. I'm going to compare them on screen. Let's go. Again, just random selecting. I have no idea who it's selecting each time. And there may be the tiniest pinch of the delay while I am rapidly tapping X to cycle through those menus there on screen. But right now, all of this is stuff that I can't control. The, back, the game is doing background loading while this is all going on. It's kind of done a very good job of hiding it there. But let's make our way into the game. When we've got real control, let's skip these menus. And now we're in. And again, I'm going to go for the same car I've done previously. Let's see if I can do a better job than I did before. I've actually avoided some of the stuff that I got last time. But again, I think this is absolutely fine. We've gone into the game. The pre-boot on that is incredibly fast. I think this is inarguably very, very quick indeed. And a terrible job. I'm getting dicked there left, right and centre by these cars. But for now, let's make our way into the final game that we're going to be testing. So once again, as mentioned, the final game on today's test regimen is Control, one of the few games on our test lineup before we go to the big comparison videos uh, in a day or two where we look at the bigger games, whereupon we are looking at a boot direct from the XMB. It's the final test, so I'm going to go ahead and not waste any more of your time, and let's go ahead and kick it off. Rapidly spamming the X button there to cycle through load menus. I'm going to go straight into where we are at this government center within the game. And again, we're just going to carry on straight in. We're going to run straight in, not waste any time. And again, do stay tuned for the videos where we will be looking at other uh, PS5 centric games. Uh, where we're going to be looking at these SSDs and comparing external SSDs against each other rather than comparing each SSD against the internal core storage. But this seems to be running absolutely fine. Again, forgive the terrible aim. I am running an incredibly unique leaning setup here while looking at about two screens at once. But again, I'm quite happy with this. I think this is running fine. So I think for now we can exit this game and we can start looking at transferring those games back. So let's go into it here. What we're going to do, we're going to end this video just like we've ended the other videos by moving these games back onto the console storage. Um, so from there, we'll end things nice and neatly. There's all four of those games. We're going to move them from the M2 SSD, that Gigabyte Aurorus 7000S, and back onto the console storage. So... What have we learned? We've learned this SSD, let's be honest, runs just as well as any of the others. I think it's a very good benchmark there we've seen so far. I will highlight that this moving back and forth thing and this slight delay in between, presumably with the PS5's um, kind of compression or uh, encryption system in between, definitely does slow moving stuff back and forth. This is the third SSD that I'm test I've tested in my series. And I will say while moving this data back and forth, that regardless of the SSD's overall uh, sequential read or sequential write, that even, you know, uh, testing a 250 gig Samsung 980 Pro that we did in video one against a 4TB Sabrent and a 1TB uh, gigabyte SSD now, that this moving data back and forth has been largely identical. There's been very, very minimal difference between them in terms of read and write speed internally within the console, which once again, only further highlights that there's definitely some 
uh, system handling in between that is unsurmountable in terms of overall performance traditionally. But I'm going to wrap things up here. I know this has been a very brief video while I just show which SSDs are working. I do promise there's going to be more extensive videos very, very soon where I compare each of these SSDs individually, looking at more aggressive games on the PS5. So do stay tuned for those. But if you have found this video helpful or do um, want to let me know that this is the sort of stuff you guys are into, then do click like. It genuinely helps. I know you don't believe it, but it really does. And click subscribe if you want to stay abreast of each of the SSDs that we will be testing next up on the test regimen will be the sn850 from wd in the wd black series and of course the score to beat as far as mvme ssds go um whether that's you know in or not in console systems the fire cuda 530 from seagate and i'm looking forward to showing you guys that one but thank you so much for watching use the free advice section and the links in the description to all of the products and heat sinks that i've mentioned recently and of course the free advice section over at nas compares where whether it's console based whether it's home storage nas das thunderbolt surveillance or more there's data storage assistance there that's completely free that can help everyone take advantage of it it's manned by two humans myself and eddie we're there to help you unpaid take advantage other than that i'll see you next time